Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Nunes Nunchi podcast, where I do deep dives and reactions to some of your favorite K dramas from a mental health perspective and more with special guests. Today, I have Alex San Diego, yay, from the Asian Mental Health Collective, where we, we collaborate together. She is Chief Marketing Officer, y'all. And she does a great job with social media. So I'm so excited to have her and so glad that we're on the same team because we talk about K-dramas on the side. So Alex, I'd love to share a little bit about, have you share a little bit about yourself to our audience? Yeah, definitely. So I'm Alex, um, I'm from Canada and I have been in love with K-pop and K-dramas and Korean TV shows ever since I was 11 years old. And so I ended up actually um, majoring in East Asian studies. And I just finished my master's degree where I wrote a thesis actually on (laughs) K-pop. And throughout throughout that time, um, I've been volunteering for mental health like initiatives and nonprofits um, in university. And so that's how I ended up at Asian Mental Health Collective as well. Yeah. Congratulations on your recent graduation from your getting your master's. That's awesome. But you that's so how was your K-pop paper received? What did people think? I mean, I passed my <laughs> passed my thesis defense. Um, I actually recently presented at a BTS conference. What and where was this BTS conference? Yeah, it was virtual, but it was hosted by I think um, I'm trying to remember the school. It was a California school. Um, oh. Yeah, I'm trying to remember which one it is. California State University. Okay, Cal State. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Well, anything. I don't, I don't know American school. school. Well. I mean, just, you just said BTS and anybody wants to go, right? <laughs> yeah. That's so I got cool. to present that is of my so thesis. Awesome. Well, so your thesis was specifically what on? And, you know, K-pop, that's actually how a lot of people got into K-dramas, K-pop. Exactly. So just share a little bit about your thesis. Yeah, definitely. So my research actually looks at the relationship between the U.S. and South Korea after the Korean War and how that relationship actually impacted the creation of K-pop, um, how it continues to be produced, and also how it was received in the U.S. Fascinating. Oh. I can't wait to read it. I would love to read that. Yeah, because, you know, I study K-dramas in that way. So that said, who's, first of all, who's in behind you? Let's talk about, I see some K-pop idols back yeah. there. Mm-hmm. I have my NCT collection behind me. Ah, so your NCT, NCT over yes. BTS. Yeah, like I really love BTS as well, but like NCT, EXO, I'm very much an SM Entertainment yeah. fan. So are you so, excited about an EXO comeback is what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. Okay. We're okay. probably going to go down that rabbit hole of discussing that, but oh, yes. I know because I have somebody else that I know is super, super a fan of EXO and she was ecstatic and I was like, wow, I haven't seen this excitement since, I don't know. No, you see this excitement all the time, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that said, K dramas. For first of all, K pop is that what you got got into K dramas? I love to hear about how you got into them. Yeah, definitely. Like basically, all at the same time, right? You get into K pop first. You see some things on YouTube. Um, And then your friends are like, oh, there's also Korean dramas and some of the idols are in the dramas and they sing the songs. And I think one of my first dramas was like pretty, one of the older ones. Um, My name is Kim Samsoon. Yes. I love that classic. Tenbin. Tenbin is always a classic. Yeah, that's a classic. I mean, wow, that is an old one. 2003 or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So you do go for it. So that's the first one. One of the first ones you saw. I'm pretty impressed. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, so then you got into it the same time and then you just basically went down that K-drama hole. Exactly. What is it about K-dramas that you like or love? Hmm. I mean, honestly, kind of like from a scholarly perspective, you know, even though I don't live in Korea and I'm not Korean myself, it gives me a way to kind of start to understand like Korean society or Korean culture, um, even though it's like obviously not real life, but there are a lot of like values um, from Korean society that are reflected in the dramas and the themes. And of course, also working in mental health or being a mental health advocate, supporting it and volunteering and being part of AMHC. Mm-hmm. And you know what I do with Nazunji, how do you make the tie with K-dramas and mental health? Tell me, what parallels do you see and how you correlate that? Definitely. 
I mean, it really like based on like what Korean dramas are really popular, it tells me kind of like what is happening with like Korean people and like what they might be experiencing and experiencing in terms of their mental health. Like, for example, um, I've seen a lot of dramas like about law lately, a lot of dramas about law. Mm -hmm. And what that tells me is that like, okay, so a lot of people are feeling like, oh, what's the word in English? Like, like, unjust like they're experiencing a lot of like unjust or unfair situations yeah. um, and that can put a lot of impact on your mental health and feeling that okay well like maybe there's a way to you know find justice or um, find like freedom from this like oppression I'm experiencing that's impacting my mental health um, through law or perhaps not like there's a lot of like questions around that um, folks don't really think about that, Im that impact it has um, on people's like daily lives but that's interesting yeah. you were saying so you were actually saying you're trying to find the white right word like unjust mm -hmm. or unfairness was there a korean word or something else that came to mind yeah like all good all good at that all good at that yes okay yeah. isn't that funny how <laughs> just that i think that's hilarious that you're like i have the korean word in what's my the mind word? What's translated the word? <laughs> you are a k-drama fanatic that's <laughs> awesome you're right so what tell me about a recent law k-drama that you watched that that we could break down a little bit yeah, I mean, I watched Vincenzo recently, and what was another one? Law School. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, let's one. talk about Law School. I, sorry, out there, I have not yet seen it. There's so much great K-dramas out there, so I got to pick and choose. But after Vincenzo, I wanted something different. So tell me about Law School. I mean, what between Vincenzo and Law School, mm -hmm. anyone that you prefer? Mm -hmm. Law School is very like, can we trust the law? Can we trust people who practice law like is always going to be like corrupt and then the ending was like no there's always going to be like just people who practice law that will like help those of us who feel all good or like unfair or, like unjust things have happened to us mm -hmm. um i think vincenzo was very like we can manipulate the unfair law to like you know find the means to our end kind of thing like very much yeah mafia like finding the kind of like <laughs> Secret yeah or like or navigate it the way we want or something you know exactly. um, I, yeah i love i do love law drama so that's interesting so you from us i love how you said from a scholarly point of view so so do you take that point of view when you're watching k dramas i mean when you're yeah. because you studied east asian culture you wanted to go into that because of your love for k-pop what's your overall perspective of how k dramas and k-pop have taken over the world <laughs> and just the phenomenon surrounding it why i mean we know the basics yeah. it's entertaining and fun and they're exactly cute. yeah what else <laughs> i think there's two main things it's either you are looking for a form of escapism or you're trying to understand your own reality in a in a in a different way you might be you know like other asian kids you might be like kind of um you might have strict parents you might not be able to out to go out there like other kids and experience the world and so like dramas are a way of seeing a world <laughs> um, and, and trying to understand your own reality. It's the pop culture studies in general is like that. Like you compare your own life to what you see in media and like see like, okay, that resonates with me. That doesn't resonate with you. That looks like my reality. That doesn't look like my reality. And you can start to understand yourself and your identity and the world around you. That's so well said, Alex. Wow. Oh. Um, and then, so that said, do you have a K-drama that has really impacted you in a certain way that you go back to and you're like, yeah, this, this really spoke to me or helped me with my mental health? So I'm thinking of a positive effect, right? Mm -hmm. mm, I think that one that I really do like going to the ones that like implicitly deal with mental health or explicitly mm -hmm. deal with mental health, mm -hmm. like it's okay to be okay or um, it's love that's okay yeah it's okay you know, to not be okay it's a, and it's okay that's love <laughs> yeah those two specifically that actually like show diagnosis and show like what it looks like working in the world of mental health care so tell me about that because yes that i know that that is what we advocate for and obviously mm -hmm. we're both in that realm but why do you like seeing that i think that one it's like really humanizing of different diagnosis and it also shows that people who like might be therapists or doctors or like work in that field also struggle with their mental health and like are not like they don't have 
every single answer kind of thing. Um, and they are a work in progress themselves. And I think that working in the field of mental health, a lot of people come to me thinking that I have the answers to like their own personal experiences or someone around them. And I have to tell them, you know, I'm, I'm on my own journey too. And it's really different person to person. And, you know, I think that those dramas really show that. That's an interesting. So that I love getting, to, this is why I love doing this and getting different perspectives, because I guess I, I love those dramas too. They're actually very well done, but they're not my favorite because I'm in it. And so maybe that's my reality more like I really need the escapism more. Mm -hmm. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I'm like, I'm absolutely. Vincenzo, which has nothing to do with my life. And I'm like, oh, there's the mafia, you know, who's good to look at and <laughs> yeah, who does some fun stuff. And then the comedians of the community who I loved was awesome for me to see, to see too. So that's what I tend to gravitate towards, but still mm -hmm. they were, I still watched, they were excellent dramas, you know? So how about your favorites? Like, what are the, what would you mm -hmm. say to a person? Hey, you don't watch K-dramas. You need to watch X or Y and Z. Mm -hmm. mm, I would probably refer them to one of my favorites of all time before it's okay not to be okay was Coffee Prince. Oh yes, that is classic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're like an old soul. <laughs> no, sorry. That, that came out wrong guys, but it's an older, it's an older girl. I mean, uh, that's a, that's a classic. Wow. Usually people, yes, people, people all love coffee prints, but generally you get the ones that say the newer ones, right? Yeah. Like Goblin, which is awesome. Yeah. But, oh, so what Goblin. do you like about coffee prints? Coffee prints is pretty What good. I love about coffee prints. Oh, that one is like, yeah. I think that one too is kind of like, it has that reality aspect to it. Like, I think I really gravitate towards the ones that are like about like superpowers are like really fun. And I do watch those, but like, I do, I like the ones that like help you kind of like think about your own reality. That yeah. one is just like, it's just about like real relationships that happen and it's told in a beautiful way. The OST is beautiful. The actors are beautiful. Like it does have that aspect where like the main character is pretending to be a guy and like falls for the main guy and like there's that happening but um yeah it's not like a goblin or like an alien or anything like that and mm -hmm. yeah both both main couples like show you like things like difficult things that happen in real life relationships and it's told with beautiful coffee shop workers <laughs> <laughs> so I love hearing this angle from you that you really like and see seeing a reality just um mm -hmm. and it kind of reflecting on your own life is there a particular k-drama and it might not be your favorite just but you know one that you liked that you felt like you really related to the story or family or even character mm -hmm. hmm. I feel like I'm not sure if I have like that one I feel like I relate to a lot of the main leads because usually, you know, they have a lot of responsibility. They're taking on a lot with their families and stuff like that. And that's yeah. definitely something I relate to. I see that in, in female leads all the time in Korean dramas. Yes, that's true. Is there one that stands out though? Like a character you're like, oh, I really liked her. Or I wish, or I, I want to model what she's done, you know, or, yeah. or what she is. Mm -hmm. That actually reminds me of... Um, a drama called Playful Kiss. I don't know if you've actually heard of this one. I've heard of it, yes, but I did not see it. That's the one with yeah. the Blue Liver Flower second lead, right? Yeah, and it also has like Chinese and Japanese versions and I've watched oh. every single one of them yeah. because I really love this storyline because I just love that this is like completely different, but I love that the main female lead is so romantic and so almost like, like literally pietous, like in her love for the main character. Like she like likes him one-sidedly throughout all of high school and university um, and doesn't even realize that the main guy is like slowly falling for her she's just like this is the person that I like and I want to be by his side and be there for him and like she's just like really dedicated in her love for him mm -hmm. it's very pure yeah. and I when I saw that I was like I I definitely related with that because I felt that like you know the, in my opinion like I think that's my ideal of like romance or love like you know without conditions or like being like yeah I'm, I'm just waiting until like he likes me back kind of thing <laughs> really so th that's great I love how I'm uncovering Alex San Diego so you're okay being that pietist almost devoted devoted guy, yeah. even if he didn't reciprocate in the beginning yeah definitely like that is kind of my favorite story where like 
eventually like the guy like slowly falls for her that's and true. then they always do fall like, yeah, yeah. because it's a drama right it's a drama. <laughs> but that's again so uh, that i'm going to reiterate that's super cool first of all any guy watching this i would say wouldn't you want an alex <laughs> hired to slave devoted to you unconditionally you don't have to do anything until you want to fall in love <laughs> right mm, yeah that's super cool on that yeah i have not seen that drama um but i'm glad you brought that up well, you like, like I said, I'm going to just bring up, you like the old school dramas. That's <laughs> awesome. So what are you currently watching? Mm, I just watched um, So Not Worth It last night. Oh. I binged it. It's 30, okay. um, 30 minute episodes. There's only 10 episodes for the first season. That's and a, long, a lot of binging. Okay. Yeah, it's like still like five hours for sure. <laughs> I was like, what? Did you just say last night? Okay. Um, that's cool. <sighs> I didn't know who's in that. That one has like, some famous folks, um, Young Jae from Got Seven from oh, The Idol, okay. Han Hyun Min, the model. Uh huh. This one is about foreigners. I also related to this one a lot. It's about foreigners who live in a dorm at a Korean university, and they all speak perfect Korean and like just their lives together. And oh, I love yeah. that. So I love that I'm learning about. I, I think I've seen it. Where is it playing? Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, I feel, I feel like I've seen it. So that's awesome. Again. I, I just learned about a new drama, seen it, <laughs> and you, you you flip to ones that you want, or honestly, the ones that are popular that come out, right? The, mm -hmm. this, the future, you know, Kim Sono. Oh my Taylor, gosh, right? I'm ready. I love him. Let's talk about him real quick. So <laughs> you are team Han Ji Pyeong. Okay. Because I was about to kick you off the podcast. I was just, kidding. <laughs> just kidding, guys. Oh what yeah. Say, that a Nam Do San fan. Um, what did you love about Kim so no, or, or Han Ji-pyong's character. Remember, I just talked about how he was like willing to just be there for her in any capacity that she needed because his love was so pure and he wasn't looking for reciprocity. I that un so you like that devotion. Mm -hmm. um, unconditional. Unconditional. I see. But then yeah. it was so sad. It was I so know. sad. I was um, like, I'm here. Yeah, just you're yeah, right. Okay. That, I'm that's here for you. Put that out now. You do, what about his whole persona though? Because a lot of the girls tend to like his persona, right? Like mm. Han Ji Pyong kind of toughness, but looked good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But but I guess you're bringing up a really a vulnerable side actually mm -hmm. that he showed, right? Definitely. That's super cool. Um, any anyone else that you really like to that is the second lead? Let's see if we differ on choices. Like you know, because that's another trope of K drama. Mm -hmm. The second that's lead. That's true. Do you see True Beauty? I haven't yet, but I've heard some things about that second lead. I mean, I see him and I, I like, I like what I'm looking to at. There's nothing like a Han Ji Pyeong. That's oh. always going to be number one. I think this one comes close. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Since you haven't seen it, but I, I think started like soon. Mm. I've been getting into Astro lately, uh -huh. which is the group that yeah. Chan, Chan was and in. You watch and this so. one because he's yeah. pretty good in this one. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So any last final words? For our Nunez Nunchi guests around K dramas or what you want to share in a scholarly sense, not to share in a scholarly sense, but you, I love your perspective. Anything else you want to say? Yeah, I would say that like Korean dramas are a great way to start learning about Korea, Korean society, Korean language. It's not like 100% reality. Like, don't go to Korea looking for <laughs> Han Ji Pyong because it's, 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 you're probably not going to find him. Yeah. But it is a great way to learn about a great place. So. That's awesome that you should. So I guess you want to go to Korea sometime soon. Yeah, I've been there six times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay then. Well then, you go again. But I miss it. I miss it. Yeah. The, the last, last part of watching in, dramas. Well, the last too. time I went was 2012. Was oh like, wow. Mm -hmm. Just busyness with family, but yeah, I agree with you. I was going to share. You're right. We're not going to get the hundred pounds, but we could get part of the hundred pounds. Like maybe we would get the 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 toughness but the cool exterior but you may not get the un, unconditional love yeah. so i like that you pointed that out because we love k dramas but we also know it's a drama right and that's what makes it fun so thanks for sharing that and the fact that you love korean culture what's your fit okay i gotta ask this what's your favorite food my favorite food oh my gosh oh it's so hard i'm uh, but you know what? i'm i'm quite traditional i like the simple stuff mm. i love to have a, a meal of like samgyeopsal Denjang Jige and Hemud Pajan. Those are my three the favorites of everybody. That's, That's like awesome. a set. That's a good set. <laughs> that is a good set. How about your, and this will be the last question, I promise, your favorite part of Korean culture? What is it 
Like if mm-hmm. someone's saying to you, why do you go to Korea so much? What do you love about it? What's one thing you could share? Well, yeah. a couple of things. I think it's so typical to say this, but um, I think that the way Korean people like treat you, like Chong is really, really special. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned that. Now, by the time this airs, we're probably knee deep in Chung, but I will say I'm going to be covering Chung because Chung is, oh my gosh, I it's love it. It's really Chung. special. It's very special. How would you describe it for folks, just in your words? Um, like, you know, the, the translations used are often like affection, um, attachment, you know, love is a word that can be used. But like in order to like describe what it feels like when like you just get this like warm hug of Jung, like someone cares about me to this extent that it makes me want to cry. And it just like causes you to just like attach to that person. Yes. And it's really hard to break that attachment. Um, and that's honestly part of the reason why I think that K-dramas and K-pop are so big because like the way that they treat their fans are different. Right. And the way they tell their stories are different because they 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 show this very deep type of attachment and affection and emotion. And it's hard, it's hard to break it up. Right. To, oh my gosh, you described Chung so well. Um, <laughs> yes. And by the time people hear this, we'll have been going through Chung. And maybe that's where I'll reach out and say, hey, what's another K-drama that you think of? But you know, it's in a lot of K-dramas, the relationships we see of that Chung mm-hmm. and that affection and attachment. So I'm so glad that you ended on this note because I love, love that. Thank you so much, Alex, San Diego guys. First of all, don't you love her name, Alex? (laughs) San Diego. From Canada. Um, So glad, I know. We're going to have to have you again because we're going to talk more about your thesis, but I'm going to read, read her thesis, guys. I don't know if you can make it public, but I'm sure people would want to read about K-pop and how it's changed our relationship with Korea and the U.S. I would. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching Nunas Nucci podcast and also listening. You can listen on Spotify, Google, and Apple. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. you can listen in on platforms such as Spotify, Pandora, Google, and Apple, but also watch the podcast on our Nunas Nucci YouTube channel every Monday where it launches at 6 p.m. Eastern.